Okay, today I'm going to be showing you how to make a bucket server. There's probably thousands of tutorials out there already on how to do this, but I thought I'd make another one anyway, since there can never be too many tutorials. Um, to start off, you want to make a folder. Let's make a new folder and call it whatever you want. Let's go for my server, because that's pretty simple and easy to remember. <laughs> After that, uh, open a web browser and get yourself off to bucket.org. <laughs> get yourself off to bucket.org. Never said that before. Um, click on get craft bucket. Uh, scroll down the page until you find the craft bucket recommended build. And you should download a .jar file. That's this one here. Uh, the 1.01 .01 recommended. Uh, and then drag that over into the folder you just made. Oh, where is it? There it is. Uh, you can close that now. Back up on the page where you downloaded it from. And these code boxes are important. Scroll down to the third one and copy it. I use the third one. You can use the others depending on what type of Java installation you've got. But the third one just generally works with everything, so it's easier to use. Um, open up your folder and create a new text document. Uh, name it run server. And open it. And paste the stuff you just copied from the website in there. And you see here where it says craft bucket 1.0 snapshot? This is the jar file, the name of the jar file. It's, well, this is, is uh, outdated. As you can see, it's different. So we want to change that to, to this. So copy the name of this jar file and paste it over that. Now it matches. Make sure it matches. Otherwise it's not going to work and you're going to get an error when you try and run. Uh, and you save this as. Remember to save as. Um, we want to save this as a batch file so it, it's like a, a computer process instead of just a text document. So we take the first where it says save as type, you want to change that to all files and at the end of the file name put dot bat and save that and that should change it to a bat file and you can delete the text file now and you're left with your bat, oops sorry you're left with your bat and your jar um, now all we need to do is double click the .bat file and it should run your server. And it will load up all the things that you need. Your server.properties, your world folder, generating all everything it needs to. As you can see. Um, once that's finished preparing all the spawn area, uh, it'll be live, so basically um, I can find my Minecraft. You can you can go ahead and join the server you just made on your own computer. That's always fun playing with yourself. Not sure. Oh, two have opened up there. That's that's not good. <laughs> and to do that, you log into Minecraft, obviously, unless you have a cracked version, which you don't. And you should pay Mojang. Goodness sake. Uh, multiplayer, direct connect, and to connect, all you need to type in is local, oops, local host. I was doing capitals then, okay. And you should join, and you'll be on the server you just generated. Look at that. Everything looks a bit strange. What's going on? Okay, doesn't matter. But unless you have your ports forwarded, no one out of your local area network will be able to join so only people on a Wi-Fi connection to your router or connected by an Ethernet cable to your router will be able to join this server unless you forward your ports and I'll show you how to do that in another video I think some other time so yeah I hope you enjoyed that tutorial I don't know why you'd enjoy a tutorial 
but I hope you learned something from it and that now you can have your own bucket server that your friends can come round with their laptop or whatever and play Minecraft. Yay! Please subscribe and look out for the next video which, where I'll show you how to connect it to the World Wide Web so you can have all kinds of crazy fangirls after you on your Minecraft server.